Hello, everybody, and Grace. <laughs> Hello, Daisy, and everybody. Um, we are back, and we're going to do something else today about well-being and in the spirit of be well. And um, so we like today, we're going to talk about something. So we can see that um, in in Ireland in recent weeks, there has been uh, like from the government level, there's been kind of a conscious promotion of mental health and well-being as something that deserves attention. Um, and actually, for me, it was interesting because it's there's a lot of it is about doing and what you need to do. And that's grand. And, we, and that's something that we we would do in BUL as well. But um, I thought it would be interesting to look at what do we have? And this today, we're going to talk about guiding lights. And that's something that is kind of inspired by an artist that we admire a lot called Mary Andrew. And she has a lovely graphic in, in her book, um, that I can't remember the name of, but I did buy it. Um, but it's it's about like it's a lovely graphic of someone standing there, and they have a kind of a lantern, and in the in the lantern it has trusted friends or trusted people, and then it's a pathway, and along the pathway there are guiding lights, and she has kind of referenced what are her guiding lights, um, and that kind of inspired us to think about. Um, so when you think about guiding lights, it's about for me anyway, it's about it's things that kind of give you a sense of direction or something that gives you a sense of comfort maybe or is also showing you the way um or perhaps gives you a sense of confidence that there is a way um so we have both myself and grace have decided to choose a set of guiding lights we don't know what each other chose so there may be some crossover um but we wanted to do it and share it because like again in my view it's actually worthwhile i was going to say important but i'm going to say worthwhile instead it's worthwhile to think about what your guiding lights are and to give it like we've given ourselves nearly, nearly less than a week but a good few days to kind of think about what they are for us if we had to choose five um but we would yeah we would recommend that you do it because the one thing the last thing i'll say before i ask you what it means for you is that the, the very act of thinking about your guiding lights for me means that there is a pathway there. So it's kind of saying, yeah, like we, whatever's going on and whatever the darkness uh, or however it might feel in terms of the world being gloomy, if I have guiding lights, then I have a journey to make and, and they will serve me or in one way or another, they will be uh, valuable. Uh, in that journey for me but what did it mean what did it mean for you when the when opposite I, no. No, okay. <laughs> no, you put that very well uh, the only thing i'd add is like so uh, yeah there's lots of guidelines and even in our last video was about the five a day for for mental health and yeah it's they're doing and that's grand and they're kind of generic things that you apply to your own life but i think what's interesting about guiding lights is that it can it's every person's is so unique me and you might have crossover because our journeys and paths in life often cross and that's cool but we also have ones where we have to walk alone so and and yet oft, often the guiding lights were created by others who've walked a similar path before you and so the process of identifying your own is deeply personal and yet there's something very lovely about the connection with others who have struggled or walked or you know and had the same joy as you whatever it is so it's a very different thing than applying guidelines to your own life it's a very inward thing um, and it's quite a lovely pro thing to do actually i really enjoyed trying to think what are mine so yeah it's gonna be i'm excited to hear yours likewise so who will go first you okay <laughs> <laughs> If you want, go ahead. Yeah, I'm happy. So my first one, they're not in order either. No. Oh, yeah. Did you, Should yeah. they be? <laughs> I don't think so. But okay. the first one that I will share is, um, so one that's really strong for me is, and I, and I was just trying to decide about the word, but I chose the word companions. Um, so that, because that for me includes family 
and friends and colleagues and those who who travel pathways with me <clears throat> so for, that's about um so companions are those who've had shared journeys with me so i get to feed off the nostalgia of those who have been involved or have been in a chapter of my life um that has been positive adventurous interesting challenging whatever um but that for a period of time like it could be schoolmates it could be people in in the different youth projects or youth clubs or in college um or the times when uh, within our family that you know and different kind of significant moments have happened and those who have been there for those um and i also include so for me like how companion is a guiding light is also the sense that so there are companions now one of which you are and and again in some of the stories of my life there are people who are companions on that journey and it's not just one package there are multiple journeys happening at the same time but i also choose it because i want in anticipation of companions to be who will join other journeys or other adventures or other parts of my life as it progresses so that's my first one over to you and so and i like if i of course people as well but that i'm going to reference people later um because my first one is very specific and it is underlined chapters or paragraphs in books and i brought a prop actually well i have it just happened to be have it on my so i do this i tag things this is untamed by glennon doyle and like if i open like you can go you can't really see i don't i doubt on the camera but there's things underlined um and i have a bookshelf of things and i one of the first rules i was taught you know i think we all are don't write in books don't tag the things but i do because i'll have well-worn books from people who have done have had their own journeys that i admire or that i can learn something from and i'll go back all the time to those pages uh for whatever particular guidance i need so glennon for example she's a master of i think beautiful language and so if you need to read one page that will make you feel really inspired or really like go oh, yeah i'm go, gonna go for it like i go to this if i need somebody to explain and give me the words of what is going on in a challenge it's more so brene um and the go you, you often reference um I'm not going to be able to remember his name now. John, no, who wrote about the soul for Adam Cara? Oh, John O'Donoghue. Um, yeah, so like there's, and there's, or there'd be, I have books by Sister Stan, um, uh, Titchen at Hand. So, so underlined paragraphs um, or chapters in books are a guiding light for me, in, particularly in moments of what do I do next or what even is going on right now? And so what do you underline with? I, I kind of try and tell myself <laughs> that I'm being I'm being mindful by only using pencil. Pencil <laughs> depends. If I know it, it depends on, actually on how thick the paper is. So if it's highlighter, then sometimes that's annoying for the next page. Um, and then I'll use pencil. But if no, and, and, I, and I have the tags as well. Everything so on. Tags is other level now. I, I know. Yeah. What's your next one, Daisy? Oh, so my next one is Jokers. And I mean that not in the sense of the Joker, because that's a villain. Um, so for me, like, so I, when I think about how important, a guiding light for me is humor, laughter, and jokes, and having, and, and I, when I think about it, like I was thinking about, like, back in the day when the queens uh, would be sitting in court or kings, and there could be wars and struggles and but every court had a jester and when i think about it it's like that imagine the pressure on the jester but the jester was necessary was crucial to bring some light or lightheartedness or some humor to whatever was going on and i imagine that like people then in maybe powerful positions yeah i wonder sometimes how important was the jester for them or for for the well-being of the court or those who are there and um, but for me it's really important and, and and as you know i'm into archetypes and it's a jester um, or the trickster like these are archetypes that have they're like blueprint characters that have been around since the dawn of humans um, and i really think that 
humor serves us um i know that jokes can be can can be kind of defined by the culture that you're in and and they can change in terms of what's accepted what isn't and etc cetera, etc cetera. but if i can't I, th I think especially in tough times um if i can't find the laughs then I really, yeah, then, then like, and that's why it's such a guiding light for me that if I'm here, like, obviously in my house, we have me and me and Fionn's are, are like the dynamic duo or the diabolical duo that we have the exact same uh, sense of humor. So we bounce off each other all the time. And so if I've had a tough day and I know that he's, that when we're sitting at dinner, we'll find we'll find the laughter, we'll find the jokes. And I really, and I also appreciate others out there doing that. So every comedian that I admire is a guiding light for me because and whether it's people are making jokes about politics, making jokes about life or just doing gags. Um, and I, we have some phenomenal ones, even locally in Bray. Um, but I think, yeah, I can't imagine a journey or following the pathway without having a, a joker. That's my second one deadly and i would say that's true of you like even if you're we have to talk about something that's tough you but there's something about like the cutting the tension yeah. so that it's not overwhelming so it's when it's getting to 100 percent, you're like i can't handle any more of this tension then a joke can relieve some of the pressure in the room my second one um is singing and dancing with anyone else or even on yourself by yourself but i think definitely with others and i can do neither sing or dance but the reason why it's a guiding light is because the moment where and it can be i'm thinking of a particular so the sing-along social is an event that is run um in ireland that is uh for the choir it's called the choir of people who don't know how to sing and it's just you get a hymn sheet of like classic cheesy songs and everyone just is packed in a room and sings and dances along but it, i know it happens in nightclubs or you know even in local hip-hop groups dances dancing rooms and all this or even in a car going to the chipper with your friends and a song comes on you all sing there is nothing like when because i originally i should say that, that this guiding light was going to be lyrics but i wanted to add another layer because it's not just lyrics. It's this moment where you could be singing, like I remember singing Ironic by Alanis Morissette with my friends driving through Greystones. And it was like, we all, this song is perfectly describing a feeling and an emotion. And we are all perfectly able to then also mirror it back to the song by our actions, by our dancing and by our singing along. And it is so powerful like the to be able to do that and to connect and, it, and it's kind of grounding in a way. So sometimes guiding lights, like when you're standing under a light, it means you can see around you for the first time. If you've been walking up to the light, you can't see. And then when you're standing under it, you can't. And that's what it is for me, is the dancing and singing with people is like getting grounded and having this kind of shared understanding of a, a world experience. And sometimes, right, you can't put into n normal conversational language uh, you can't describe a, a moment or an emotion or event in words. Really, it has to be in music, yeah. uh, along with lyrics. But it has to be in music. And for me, that singing and dancing captures that. And for, so that's why it is a guiding light. If that makes sense. Fantastic. What are we only, on? Well, I can I can only relate with like singing ballads, like <laughs> an old rebel song. Ah, listen, any type, any Connection. type. Okay, my third one is I don't know I don't know if I'm cheating, but like so stories, but I've kind of said stories through time. Mm. Um, and again, most people who know me know I'm obsessed with stories, storytelling, books. Um, and I really like I was actually kind of wondering how to even define the why of this. And it's like so for me, stories are what the the existence of story is how humans like took the step from animal to another other level as a species for me and there's something so like it like even as i think about it and talk about it there's something so profoundly powerful about the fact that we that i again as someone who's obsessed with celtic heritage that i can connect with stories from long ago and um, 
that are that for the time that they were created were designed to give meaning or find our purpose um, or to interpret what was happening in the world or to give guidance for those in a particular society and to be able to relate or connect with that and still bring it forward to today is like just melts melts my mind um, and so like it's re so again when i think about guiding lights it's like the stories through time the stories that i can learn from the stories that can inspire me um stories from other places that i've never been uh, from people who existed long ago and um, that can still serve me um, and be a guiding light and it's where like i hang my hope a lot on stories and um, because when i come across like the, the stories of yeah of overcoming struggle or of people transcending or you know whether it's getting through like a particular personal issue or how people come together to do something i hang my hope on that for the future because we've done it humans have done it they've overcome they've transcended they've navigated like stuff that you like that is unimaginable even today and we're still here and we're still growing as a species and we're still um like discovering amazing things about ourselves and about things beyond us um and the last thing i would say is that the, the other the a part of that guiding light for me is the dream that we will as a species or as the humans on earth that we will have a unifying story and that you know a unifying story kind of gives us then a sense that there is the us is all of us and the future is for all of us and a unifying story will be like the ultimate guiding light of all so that's my third one well i'm gonna i, I i'm gonna switch my well i didn't really have them in an order but it, a similar one that i have but it's more of a a way that I practice that I guess is I watch interviews with people I admire on on YouTube and that's a guiding life for me so for example like uh, interviews with Mary Robinson about and and or you know I've watched ones recently with Jerry Adams or Mary Lou or it could be there's another uh, guy I follow at the moment who runs triathlons and trains them and and it's his like daily vlog of what he does and like people asking him questions or even videos of and it kind of ties into your stories part really is is it, people saying what they do in a normal day but it's people i admire and what i love about watching interviews with people is you could watch an interview from 1996 and they're starting off on their and then you and then you watch them answer the same questions or similar questions 10 years later and you can track and some interviews it could be a 20 minute long interview but there could be three minutes in that that is what you needed to hear and it, it it's for me i i noticed that it's actually something i do often is i'll i'll, I'll youtube interview with Brene brown interview with yoga with adrian i don't know her surname but she has done loads of interviews or interview with whoever it is and and those and those interviews is is you you're watching someone dig into their story and for me then i take what i need to be a guiding light in whatever i'm doing so that would be my third one awesome and what a gift they give us again uh, like the idea of storytelling or the storyteller the, that as a role or an archetype is unreal. Yeah. my fourth one is music to escape thinking so in a in a contrasting way when you uh, when you were saying that you were going to talk about lyrics i've i've discovered that it's not not always it's probably less about lyrics and more about energy and emotion for me so i'll get so for example if i have to do chores in the house and there and chores are no crack um and i don't want to do them and, and be living in my head at the same time um because that's like double pain there you know if you're trying, <laughs> trying to think through all your nonsense so i would list i would stick on my earphones ask permission from the fam um obviously don't mind but i'd stick in my earphones and i would listen to heavy metal like slayer system of a down sepultura like i would go full heavy metal and <laughs> i would like it like, makes chores like so easy to do because i'm just tapping into the energy in the music and it's like you know like people always talk about 
and I'm not going to get into heavy metal because I would also listen to hip hop and rap and or sometimes I would I would kind of tap into Ludovico Einaudi, which is like this kind of piano maestro Italian dude who is just the most tranquil, like taking you to another place, like genius, genius musician. Um, or today I was listening to Madrideus as I was filling the attic full of Halloween stuff. And so, so for me, it's like music to like, and that's why I, I say music to escape thinking because it, it just, uh, what it does is it gives me an outlet for, and it's not just the process and emotion that I'm feeling. It's just to give, like, just change the energy or to give me a vibe, um, that is might be needed at the time or an outlet or, or to just kind of, yeah, like, and that's, and it's a guiding light for me because again, the idea, like you might, and I'm sure for anyone who does watch this, if anyone t took a pause and thought, imagine there was no music mm. in the world. And, and again, like if you go f like deep anthropology, like the, the fact that humans create music just is other level like it's re and and then that we that it serves us in ways that we that like in so many ways that we might need so that, again if i listen to rage against the machine it's i am tapping into the lyrics or public enemy or sinead o'connor um, and there's messaging and storytelling and like there's sinead in the background um that is huge but then if i listen to if i, I could be listening to scooter or like <laughs> <laughs> or some trance or house music which i really love and that again that that taps into my soul in a different way like then the, and it doesn't go to my head as such it goes somewhere else and I, like my dopamine does be right so you're on to number four, number four. For you. no i was about to tell you something really interesting about music before i move on to number four two things well i can only remember the first one right now but i saw that this woman and i, I haven't watched her ted talk yet but she is creating a way or maybe it's already been created but is refining a way to sign music to people who can't hear and the red hot chili peppers had her on stage and she it like i i obviously could hear the music but her you could feel it off her and anthony kiedis the, red, the lead singer of the red hot chili peppers just stood beside her and vibed with her for the whole song it was under the bridge oh my it was next level and for me that's told me everything i need to know about music it's not just what we hear it's the way she was doing it's so always magic um but i can't remember the second thing i was going to tell you about music so i will tell you now well like, i'm gonna tell you like it this is like a dirty little secret like because do you ever see the girl on is it american idol or america's got talent who lost her hearing when she was 17 i think or 18 she was in music school and she had a very rare uh, degenerative disease and lost her hearing. And then she went through a rough time, which is like every contestant on uh, Mary's Got Talent. Um, but she came, she came to the show and she has, she had written her own song and played uh, ukulele. And, but she, like, she can't hear her own sound and it was phenomenal the tune was top quality no messing and she came on stage and she had a band like a keyboard and a guitar took off her shoes so the way they, they had the floor kind of rigged in a way that she could pick the vibe the feel the beat and um, somehow through her feet but her timing like her her tone like her like it was again and in wow. the same way so she was saying the same thing that she feels music without hearing it Oh, I remember the other thing I was going to tell you as well. Do you ever, there's something really special about when somebody sends you a song that they think you'll like. That is for me uh, like such a lovely. I'm going to send you a Slayer, Raining Blood later on. No, thank you. But I, you know, people who know you and know what you would like and know that a song would mean. You just qualified that now. Like, yeah. Burned me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But no, that's very special. Yeah, I think, that's cute. Yeah. So my fourth one is quotes. <laughs> so I love a good quote, but uh, or but even more than that, it's it's nuggets of wisdom that people have put words to so eloquently. And one of the ways that we would practice that, I guess, is like the, I have them here: cards, um, like I have my little mindfulness cards, or 
more calm, less stress quotes, 50 quotes. And then I have little quote books um, or, you know, Instagram quotes that I've saved, bookmarked. Um, and the reason they're guiding lights is obvious. I mean, usually they you have to read them 20 times over and then remember them and they're like, like blow your mind. But it's it's again, this kind of wisdom that can only be gained through experience. And I think by sometimes repeating those kind of quotes to yourself, it's like an anchor in sometimes a moment where you're like, what's going on? And, and again, it's, it's looking to though that, that person made it through whatever they were going through to discover this wisdom. And they've, they're able to put it in, in so little words so that it's easy to, for us to consume and, and take the learning. Um, uh, so little nuggets of, of wisdom in quotes is, is a guiding light for me. Cool. And it kind of relates nicely to what you were saying at the start about how it's different for different people. Yeah. And I love the idea that, you know, that a quote, <clears throat> even in a, in a, when you need it, like, or in a moment in time or when, I know we send each other lots as well, but like to be able to, like, that you hadn't heard it before and you're like, oh, like yeah. when it lands, it's. Because sometimes it's, the path might be similar you might have even gone through the same thing or before yourself or somebody else has gone through something similar. But when you read a quote that is another light on something or a different perspective or something we may have missed the first time round, next level. So good. What's your fifth one, Daisy? So my final guiding light is, I bet you it's the same word that you're going to use because you gave a little indicator earlier on. People <laughs> who, but people who see the world differently than I do so that's a guiding light for me um, and it's an important one because it's kind of a reminder guiding light as well that I can be it's like reminding me that I can be connected to people who have different views um, than I do and that that can be that that doesn't have to pit us against each other or doesn't have to be a fracture or a barrier between us and um, it also reminds me like I find it a guiding light and a healthy reminder that that I only see the world from where I'm standing. That's my default. That and and unless I, with intention, kind of think about something from someone else's point of view or open up a conversation with someone, or I'm willing to kind of see where I might move from my stance or allow the possibility that someone could influence. Um, and I think that's the, it's it's an important guiding light for me because. The, again, a unifying story um, includes all people. And um, so people who see the world differently from me are also part of the world. And, and who am I to say that they're any less valuable or, or, or less worthy or less important? And I know we all, we qualify like people's contribution to the world or we judge it again. Like if, if people are causing harm, then that's, yeah, that, that requires judgment in one way or another. Um, but if, if I imagine like spend, going on my journey, my life journey with people who are the same as me or have all the same views, like, like people under my, the, the roof of my house don't have the same views of the world as I do. And that's, again, that's a strength of how our family operates. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an important guiding light for me and it reminds me a lot. And, and it, and like, it, it's a strength because we can, I can share a journey with someone who doesn't see the world the same as I do. We can find common ground enough to still have fulfilling, enriching experiences. Um, and maybe there are times when we'll, our paths will diverge and that's grand as long as um, it's like we're going where we need to go or where we want to go and that we're not gonna cause, cause harm on wherever we do go or, or however that journey progresses. But well, that's my fifth and final. Is a good one because even people can who have different views to show you might show you something in yourself you didn't know. Mm. I have found out because that I have a sometimes a low tolerance for <laughs> for when people don't understand where I'm coming from, and then I get frustrated with myself if I can't articulate it. So, like, yeah, it's a guiding light, and sometimes guiding lights are challenging, right? My my fifth one is uh, mentors, but in two or mentorship i should say and i'll start with because i think sometimes when we take the responsibility 
of being a mentor for others. It can be a guiding light for ourselves because we have to challenge ourselves to see things differently or to do things differently. Um, so when we are, are playing the role of a mentor, it can be a guiding light for ourselves in a weird way because we're making ourselves act in a higher way or more in tune with our values because we know others are watching. But really mentor mentors for me have been like I can think of a few who are the people who come from a place of love and care for you that want you to get there, but know that they can't do the journey for you. So they might ask stimulating questions to, they might give you nuggets of information that they know will help you. They are watching your journey carefully and only intervening when you ask uh, and you know that they're there obviously you're one so like i met you in what i was 11 and told you i was 12 because you had to be 12 to be in coib but i was only 11 and like i can think of countless examples of where i i would say it could be one in the morning and i no not often but say days this is happening what do i do it's crisis or other times where we're just having the chats and you'll say something that you know say when i was in college and studying politics and i didn't know how to but i want to spend more time in high res doing leadership and you were able to help me balance those things there's a million examples or you know i'm very lucky my parents they they're mentors in a different way where they would know my whole story and they would know oh do you remember you did that though and you overcame that and they're able to give you reminders um there's sports coaches and teachers and so for me mentor playing a mentor role can be a guiding light for myself but then there's also mentors throughout my entire journey who continue to dip in and out when i need them with exactly what i need and who are championing so yeah mentorship is my favorite. Cool. it's a great there's a it's, it's a it's a great purpose to have to kind of pursue the idea that you could be or that you should be a mentor to others that it's <clears throat> that in your transition into adulthood like the idea that all of us could be mentors um and yeah and i think the more the more there are i think the, the better society operates or the better communities look out for each other or are there to pick up the pieces if they need to or that there's unconditional positive regard um, regardless of the the, the, the struggles or the fails or the mishaps so yeah it's a great one. and it's and it's interesting because it means then that uh, as well it's a duality so you can be a mentor and also have mentors because mm. we all should <laughs> and that's like the connectedness of us all i guess there we go we hope people somehow connected with that but we do genuinely encourage people to yeah just find a pocket of time grab a cuppa get a notebook even and yeah think about what what are your even share them with us that wouldn't that be wonderful that would be amazing i shared the ones that i didn't get to say underneath <laughs> i'll comment just how long is that list <laughs> yeah i got so into it but yeah we really hope that it was and and like we yes we are framing this in the context of the time that we're in at the moment and that yet you, we believe that everyone has guiding lights um if you kind of look hard enough or and they're sometimes not too far away or inside you um and they're not always people they can be things as well and outlets so thanks for tuning in <laughs>